Hi, Rick here with a small lore speculation video on the identity of the Master and where he fits into the timeline of his history as well as the numerous deaths of the Master. Spoilers for series 12 of Doctor Who and everything that has come before to be honest by the way. So, the first two episodes of series 12 of Doctor Who have introduced a new regeneration of the Master, the Time Lord antagonist to the Doctor, childhood friend then colleague gone bad and constant foil. But due to the Hooniverse's nature as a time travel show, there's been a lot of speculation on where this master fits into the lore. Is he a pre or post Missy regeneration? Could O even be the earliest master we've yet seen, even before the classic portrayals of Ainley and Delgado? Well, the BBC seems to be treating the latest master as a linear continuation off of the last one, but there's still a little room for interpretation which I'll get into in a minute. Being a previously unseen early master is unlikely however, as an examination of the master's timeline will help to explain why, even though there is plenty of room to fit in 12 more actors. Also while I'm going to mention forms of the master that were incorporated into materials outside of the shows, I'm going to be including mostly information from the classic and revival series to paint out where the O master fits. Chronologically the master's story began in a similar way to the doctor's, being taken at the age of 8 to the untempered schism on Gallifrey to peer into its depths. While at the academy, the master was in the same chapter as the doctor, the Prydonian chapter, and they shared a love of exploration, a distaste for Time Lord authority, and occasionally sabotaged each other's studies in jovial rivalry. The first time we, the viewer, encounter the Master is when he was played by Roger Delgado in the episode Terror of the Autons. At this time the Master is trying to ally himself with the Nestine, a living plastic consciousness in control of the Autons. It's never revealed what regeneration of the Master this is. It could be his first form or final. However, the Master, in much the same way as the Doctor, had abandoned Gallifrey and struck out on his own as a renegade Time Lord. Why exactly he left is not certain but alluded to in several other stories and include notions that he was originally searching for his friend and rival, the Doctor, or that he had killed another Time Lord and was fleeing repercussion. But what can be seen is that he spent a not insubstantial amount of time searching for ways to prolong his life beyond the natural limit of 12 regenerations, 13 lives. Cut off from the Time Lord society, the gifting of a new regenerative cycle was seemingly out of the window, meaning if he wanted to live on, he'd have to find a workaround. Unwilling to allow himself to perish, a mentality shared by Rassilon, the Master seems to have acquired numerous tricks or technologies to grant him abilities beyond that of a normal Time Lord or Gallifreyan, not the least of which was his advanced psychic powers, something all Time Lords had but the Master excelled at. After clashing with several of the Doctor's lives, the Master's final body, his 13th form, was beginning to decay. As opposed to simply aging to death and passing, as is natural for a final Time Lord, his body and mind persisted long after it should have expired, giving him a zombified and rotten appearance, which he shrouded beneath a cloak. Seeing no alternative, he wound up on Tercerus until an ambitious Time Lord found the Master and returned him to Gallifrey to aid in a political assassination with the promise of a fresh life. This was the form of the Master seen in the Deadly Assassin, but it's not clear if this is supposed to be the same body as Delgado's or a later one. While he was foiled by the Fourth Doctor, the decayed Master had been attempting to usurp his conspirators and grant himself a new regeneration cycle. This failed, but the Master managed to flee from Gallifrey in his own TARDIS, whose chameleon circuit still works, and travelled to Traken to try to utilise the Keeper's powers to rejuvenate his decayed body. Eventually he is stopped once again by the Fourth Doctor, but not before he manages to possess the body of a Traken native, Consul Tremus, father to the Doctor's newest companion, Nyssa. Which shows us two things. Alongside his travels, the Master has learned how to literally possess someone and that he's pretty messed up as he's now basically piloting the father of the Doctor's friend just to add insult to injury. This possession was still not the outcome the Master wanted, 
and was only a stall for time, as Tremus was mortal and would still age naturally. This version of the Master would also go on to clash with the Doctor frequently and even drop the fourth Doctor from Project Ferris's radio telescope on Earth. While Project Ferris is a fictional project, it was basically Jodrell Bank, which is referenced by O atop the Eiffel Tower in the meeting between Thirteen and the Master. In this same conversation, he also references his assassination of MI6 head C. Here he claims to have used a Mandrafian laser rifle and that he still has an eye for it. This clearly is a nod to his assassination of the Gallifreyan president in The Deadly Assassin, dating the O Master as definitely post Tremus, as I find it doubtful that he would be referencing events that he had not taken part in. His final appearance in Tremus's body was when he was stranded after a confrontation with the Seventh Doctor. This clash left the Master contaminated with a virus that would eventually kill him, so a new body or regeneration would still be a priority for him. Anyway, we then have an open period in the Master's timeline where he could have been up to anything really, as the next appearance of the Master was in the TV movie, where he had been executed by the Daleks on Skaro. Thing is, we can't clearly see the body that was disintegrated by the Daleks, but the Master had made one final request, that it be the Doctor who ferries his remains back to Gallifrey. It seems however that whatever power allowed the Master to transcend his decayed 13th form also allowed him to persist after disintegration, with his mind adopting the form of a Deathworm Morphant. According to outside sources, this strange creature was a symbiotic life form that the Master fused his mind with, a creature that was not destroyed by the Dalek's execution. Instead, the Morphant Master managed to sabotage the Doctor's TARDIS and it crashed in 1999 Earth, where he then possessed an ambulance operator called Bruce. Poor guy was killed by the possession, but through the Morphant, the Master was able to puppeteer Bruce's body around even as it began to decay. Still in search of a fresh lease on life, the Master Bruce attempted to seize the Eighth Doctor's remaining regenerations, but was pulled into the Eye of Harmony on the TARDIS, being sucked into its engines. It's unclear if he truly perished after this, or if the Doctor managed to return him to Gallifrey, but some stories say that he was left stranded in the Time Vortex until the Time War. There are also a whole myriad of stories that add in new forms and escape attempts from the Master, but what is known for certain is that when the Time War began, the Time Lords reached back to resurrect the Master, meaning that for all intents and purposes, the renegade Time Lord had fully died by this point. There are some stories that try to flesh out the events of the Time War and Hey, as the whole thing is a jumbled mess of inconsistent timelines and a collapse of linearity of hellish proportions, who knows if any are true. Or all of them are. It doesn't matter, but in this conflict the Master is rumoured to have been in the form of a child for most of it. What is canon is that this was a new set of lives granted by the Time Lords, a fresh regeneration cycle just as the Master had been chasing since his decayed form several bodies back. However, the Time War proved too much for the Master, who, convinced that he was witnessing the end of everything, fled to the end of the universe and used a chameleon arc to render himself human to hide from the reaches of the last great Time War. Here, bereft of his memories, he grew into the kindly Professor Yana and tried to help humanity survive the end of the universe. It's worth noting that he remembers being discovered as a small child, but this was likely the cover story added by the chameleon arc. Either way, as we can see, any regenerations between his new cycle and Yana were operating for the Time Lords as part of the temporarily locked Time War. No incarnation of the Master from this time should be able to escape the Time War after the moment was activated by the War Doctor to seal it all away, and we see Yana regenerate into the Harold Saxon Master. This new master returns to Earth and, creating a paradox, attempts to take control of the human race using the human race from Yana's time. Thwarted once again, the master chooses not to regenerate to spite the Tenth Doctor. But, as he has many times before, he had a backup plan. He went a bit sour on and once again disengaged his consciousness from his body and had it stored in a Gallifreyan ring, which was then recovered by his followers. 
They sacrificed their life essences to build him a new body based on the biodata stored within his wife Lucy and his mind within the ring. This was interrupted, however, by a vengeful Lucy, and the Master returned in an incomplete state, constantly needing to consume energy from food or anything really as he was leaking his own life energies constantly. Although this did allow him to perform several superhuman, uh, super Gallifreyan feats, it was not a good state to be in as he was burning up his energy quicker than he could consume more. When Rassilon's master plan, see what I did there, came to fruition and he almost brought Gallifrey back, the Saxon master intervened and fell back into the Time War with his kin. Apparently during this time he was committed by the Time Lords to Gomer's asylum to be repaired. The Time Lords couldn't very well allow him to just run around shooting lightning, so I guess fixing him was more of a side effect of stabilising his energies. Rassilon, however, managed to bring Gallifrey out of the Time War after the Thirteen Doctors saved it by shifting it into a pocket universe. The now stable Saxon Master used this opportunity to escape Gallifrey once again, where his next appearance in his timeline was when he met the Twelfth Doctor on a Mondasian colony ship, and met his future form of the Mistress. This encounter ended with the Mistress stabbing the Saxon Master in the back and triggering his regeneration, but the final change was completed off screen, leading to the potential theory that the O incarnation of the Master actually preceded the Missy version. Certainly the personality of O fits closer to the Saxon Master than Missy, who sincerely made an attempt to reform. Secondly, Missy was also blasted by the Saxon Master after his seeming betrayal, and it seems to be fatal, like no regeneration, fatal. From what we've seen so far, O is motivated just as much by spite as Saxon was, and arguably one of the most malevolent versions of the Master we've seen in terms of actions. This shift in personality, although certainly closer to the Master of Old than the Mistress was, doesn't seem to flow naturally from Missy. So narratively, this O regeneration seems to better fit in the unseen regeneration between Saxon and Missy, although a final point to note is that the Master has a habit of resurrection even beyond that of a typical Time Lord. While the Doctor has spent his millennia of travelling, helping, the Master has spent all his time out there selfishly hoarding knowledge, ruling societies and looking for a way to cheat death forever, so the survival of the Mistress to regenerate is quite feasible. However, some serious mental shift has seemingly occurred if this is the case. Perhaps learning of the hidden truth of the Time Lords was enough to push him back into his old ways, or maybe there's a multitude of other lives in between Missy and O. We'll have to wait and see, and this is a topic I plan on revisiting in some form or another. There's a lot of additional forms mentioned in the books, audio novels and comics, and while there's still room for these to be slotted in, as I said before, we only ever see one master from the original cycle of regenerations, the master known as O could not be one of them. His referencing of events from the Tremus era make that clear. Now, there are probably several masters from the Time War, but these, along with its events, should be locked away and were acting loosely in the service of Gallifrey at the time, so I doubt O is a Time War era master either. Thank you for watching this video on the timeline of the master, and hopefully Series 12 does something cool with the old lore of Gallifrey and the Time Lords. They still haven't cleared up if looms were a thing or not, but it's looking like maybe they were never canon anyway. Maybe I'll do a video on those next. Well, until the next video, thanks again for watching, and goodbye.